Hi everyone, today I'm talking about betrayal, specifically patterns of betrayal with INFJ personality types and INFP personality types. The title of this video is, Do INFJs Attract Betrayal? But as always, I think that we can include INFP personality types in everything that I'm going to talk about today because it applies equally as well. If you are an INFJ personality type, or an INFP personality type, you probably have already noticed this pattern going on in your life, whether you are a younger person or an older person, if you've had a lot of long-term relationships or not that many, you probably still have experienced a pattern of betrayal because this is very common for INFJ personality types and INFP personality types. Um, we tend to have this pattern, not only of betrayal and abandonment by others, but also a pattern of not feeling valued, not feeling seen in relationships, not feeling heard. So we tend to show up and bring all of ourselves to the relationship where we really listen to the other person, we really give the other person the space they need, whether that means we're holding space for them or we're actually giving them space when they need it. But we really do everything we can to try to meet their needs and their preferences. And then we don't feel that that's returned. We don't feel that they do the same for us. They understand our needs, our preferences. They're able to value us, they're able to see us, or they're able to hear us. And a lot of times this ends sort of in a culmination of feeling uh, very used by the person or exploited even, taken advantage of. I hear that a lot from INFJs and INFPs that they feel taken advantage of in relationships. And a lot of times it then leads to abandonment or betrayal where the person disappears or the person commits some sort of action that is very betraying. You know, so if this is a romantic relationship, um, they might have a pattern of cheating on us or lying to us. If it's a friendship, maybe there's a pattern of them you know, talking about us behind our back, right? Gossiping about us, maybe betraying a secret that they knew that they were supposed to keep confidential. It can happen in the workplace where we feel betrayed by a manager or we feel betrayed by a coworker. Um, maybe we are on a team and it's supposed to be a collaborative effort, but we're feeling like when we float ideas, the ideas aren't received very well, but then the other person actually does take the idea and run with it and maybe takes the credit for it. So it's stuff like that. It can really show up in a lot of different ways. Like I said, it can show up with romantic partners. It can show up in friendships. It can show up in the workplace. It can show up in family relationships. And usually this pattern starts very young and it's not very hard for the INFJ or the INFP to say, oh, I see I have this pattern with romantic partners where they always abandon me they always betray me and that goes back to my mom or that goes back to my dad. You know, my dad left the family when I was very young or my mom was there but she wasn't ever available. Um, I didn't feel like I could trust her. I would tell her secret things and she would expose that or maybe I didn't have my privacy valued in the home. You know, maybe um, my mom came in and read my diary or my private journals. That's another very common incident in childhood for INFJs and INFPs to have someone violate their privacy and betray them in that way. So as I said, it's not very difficult for us to see where this comes from. Like, oh, I had this pattern in childhood and it's repeating in adulthood. And obviously I don't like it. It's unpleasant. It's not a fun pattern to have when you feel like you can't trust anyone and you can look back at your past and you have this history of people who have abandoned you or betrayed you or both. So where does this come from? And that's what my students are really asking when they're showing up in my classes and we're working with these patterns of betrayal, these patterns of abandonment. People are usually, like I said, very clear on the pattern, where it comes from. They're not so clear on why it's occurring or how to get it to stop occurring, which is sort of the million dollar question, of course. You know, this is a really damaging pattern that's happening in my life. I don't want it to happen anymore. How can I make it stop happening? The key to this is to see that these patterns of abandonment and betrayal with other people really start with us. And the reason they're so strong in our life is because we have a pattern of self-abandonment. We have a pattern of self-abandonment. Yes, I said that twice because it's really important. And when I say this in a class, there's usually this pause and the students say, okay, I'm feeling that. For some reason that's speaking to me. But what is that 
mean exactly? What is self-abandonment? What is a pattern of self-abandonment? Self-abandonment is exactly what it sounds like. It's when you abandon yourself. It's when you override your own needs and your own preferences to serve the needs or preferences of someone else. It's when you don't protect yourself from others who do not have your best interest at heart. It's when you violate your own boundaries in order to make someone else happy or in, or in order to make someone, to give them what they want or to make sure that they're not angry with you, that they don't have a negative reaction to you. And a lot of INFJ personality types and INFP personality types will do this. This is a pattern learned in childhood, usually because a lot of us had a narcissistic family member, a narcissistic parent, a codependent parent, we experienced enmeshment with a parent. So it was ingrained in us from a very young age that we were not allowed to have boundaries. Um, it's selfish to have boundaries. That's a belief that's really ingrained in a lot of INFJs and INFPs from childhood. If you assert that you want your own privacy or you want to be seen as an individual or you have your own preferences, immediately you are guilted for that. There's a really big guilt trip put on you, you're shamed for that, and you're told, whether implicitly or ex explicitly, that boundaries are selfish and that you trying to assert a boundary is selfish. So a lot of INFJs and INFPs, when we grow up and we try to assert boundaries, we immediately feel bad. We feel like we're doing something wrong and we feel like we're doing something that's hurting other people. I'm not allowed to have boundaries. That's the limiting belief behind that. That's the subconscious belief. I'm not allowed to have boundaries. So that's where we get into a pattern of self-abandonment because we start violating our own boundaries and we don't protect ourselves from others. So when we get into a relationship with someone who is abusive in some way, whether that's physically or emotionally or verbally, there's lots of different forms of abuse, we will tend to either ignore that or justify that to ourselves or say, well, you know, give them an excuse like they're, are, they're really traumatized or they had a really bad childhood or I understand why they did that. So, you know, I'm going to forgive them or I'm going to stay with them. So we are abandoning ourselves in order to make it right for that other person. Now ourselves, the, the us inside, the I inside, the watcher, the observer who is seeing everything sees us doing this. We see how we are abandoning ourselves to serve this other person. And we're saying to ourselves on a subconscious level, oh, I see how it is. So the next time you're with your partner and they're abusive to you, that's gonna be okay. You're not going to put a stop to that behavior. You're not going to walk away from that person. Um, you're not going to remove yourself from the situation, right? Like you're not going to put in these protective measures to make sure we don't get hurt again. You're going to put that person's needs and wants and desires over your own safety or, or over your own needs. And I see how that's going to go. And so now I don't feel like I can trust you. We're saying that to ourselves. So a lot of times we have this deep seated distrust of ourselves because we've been in so many situations in the past where we have violated our own boundaries. We've said yes when we know we should have said no. And it goes beyond like, I don't really want to go to the birthday party this weekend, or I don't really want to go to the barbecue, or I don't want to volunteer to run that person's errands for them. This stuff goes much, much deeper when somebody is actually hurting us. They're harming us, whether physically or psychologically, and we're not saying no. We're not saying that's absolutely not okay. You're not allowed to touch my body in that way, say those things to me, um, make that demand of me, emotionally manipulate me in that way. We're not saying this. This really, really comes up a lot with narcissistic relationships. And I get that question too from INFJ personality types and INFP personality types. Invariably, I get students who say, I've always attracted narcissists and I don't understand why. Why is there such a narcissist empath connection? And I know there's a lot of information out there online about this and it really is a deep and nuanced subject, but one of the most basic simple answers is because you are not honoring your own boundaries. You have a pattern of self-abandonment and narcissists can pick up on that. And usually the empaths are like, but how do they pick up on it? Are they psychic? It's not that hard to pick up on, honestly. For the person who has the pattern, it can be very hard for them to see it in themselves, of course, because 
it's hard for us to see our own patterns. We have a lot of blind spots around our own behavior. So if you have the pattern of self-abandonment, it might be quite difficult for you to see that. It's not difficult for other people to see it, especially people who are manipulators as a matter of course, people who prey on other people, you know, routinely take advantage of other people, get into dysfunctional dynamics with other people. The narcissist, right? It's really not hard for a narcissist to see a pattern of self abandonment in other people. And it starts out with little things, you know, and narcissists will give you these little tests. Anybody manipulative, they will start out by testing you. They will push your boundaries a little bit, you know, you will express a preference and they will try to get you to override that preference. You will say, you know, I don't know what it is, um, but I really don't like Thai food. It's just too spicy for me. I, th I think I'd rather not eat Thai food for a while. And the narcissist will hear that and they will immediately try to get you to go to a Thai restaurant with them. And they will do it um, subtly. They will do it slowly and gradually, but they will try to get you to override that boundary. And they'll keep working up and they'll keep working up. And for empaths and INFJs and INFPs, who for us, it's very hard to say no. It's very hard for us to assert a boundary at all. We will end up violating our boundaries. So we'll end up not only going to the Thai restaurant, but you know, sampling eight different dishes that are five stars of spice, having a horrible stomach ache, and then masking that because we don't wanna risk a negative reaction from the other person and going home and feel very ill, right? And again, our body is saying, oh, I see what you're doing here. I've expressed that I can't eat that kind of spicy food. And you did it to me anyway. You took me to that restaurant anyway, and you made me try five different dishes because you didn't want to upset this manipulative person who was getting you to violate your boundaries, right? So our body is always watching. We are always watching ourselves and saying, are you gonna protect me or are you not going to protect me? And then we have that pattern of self-abandonment, right? So this is how we attract betrayal. And I know it's, um, these days when you talk about the law of attraction, things can get really mixed up because people tend to think that you're saying, well then you deserve for that to happen to you or you wanted that to happen to you. And that's not what I mean at all when I'm saying we're attracting it. It does not mean that anybody deserves this or anybody wants this to happen to them. Obviously not, abandonment is one of the most unpleasant things a human being can experience. I doubt anybody really wants that to happen to them. But when I say attract, it's because we have a pattern that's already in place, that we're already playing out with ourselves. Other people are seeing that and they're coming and they're sort of joining in the game. It's like, we're already playing checkers. We've been sitting in the park playing checkers week after week. We're going to attract other people who like to play checkers. They're walking by, they're seeing the game we're playing. They're like, oh, that looks like fun. I love a good game of checkers. That's kind of how it works with narcissists. It's like oh, they're really drawn into our game because they see we already have this pattern going on. Now this will happen not only with narcissists, but also people who actually have good intentions. You might've had well-meaning people in your life who were not narcissistic, they were not consciously trying to manipulate you, but they ended up betraying you nonetheless. Maybe they just were kind of thoughtless or kind of inconsiderate of your feelings. Um, again, it's that relationship where you're like, they're not a bad person, but when I'm around them, I really don't feel seen really don't feel valued. Again, it's that pattern of self-abandonment. We're not valuing ourselves. We're not valuing our own needs. We're not valuing our own preferences. And then we're expecting other people to value and see and hear, and they can't because we're not doing it for ourselves. That pattern has to be in place for ourselves before other people can connect with it and honor it. So this is one of the really deep root causes of this constant problem that INFJ personality types and INFP personality types have of attracting betrayal. So what's the solution? The solution, it starts very simple. Do not say yes when you mean no. That might mean that you build in some buffer time before you give somebody an answer. And I always encourage all INFJs and INFPs to do this with phone calls, with text messages, with emails, in person, if you can, when you're having in-person conversations, say, I don't know, can I get back to you on that? Take some time to process. Take some time to sit with it, even if it's just you know 15 minutes or an hour, but take some time to sit with yourself and say, 
Is this a yes for me or is this a no to me? Don't just automatically and unconsciously agree to whatever anybody else wants you to do. This is a real big problem for INFJs and INFPs, especially younger INFJs and INFPs. When we are younger in our teens and 20s, we really will just agree to what anyone else wants to do because we want to keep the peace, we want to maintain that harmony flowing. So we will say yes a lot of times when we mean no. So it's very important to sit with yourself and say, is this a yes or is this a no for me? And if it's a no, do not say yes, do not proceed. Really express that no, you don't need to be mean about it, you don't need to be confrontational about it, but you can very quietly and firmly say, I'm so sorry, this isn't going to work for me. I'm so sorry, I don't think this is a fit. Um, and I know a lot of people out there would say, you don't even need to say sorry, just assert yourself, stop apologizing. That's great if you can get there, but let's be real for INFJs and INFPs, not saying you're sorry sometimes is almost more difficult than saying no. So I wouldn't advise trying to put those two things together right away. Yes, you can get to a place where you're not constantly apologizing, but in the beginning, when you're doing beginning boundary work, if it helps you to feel better, to preface it with, I am so sorry, but I can't, I won't, I don't want to, that's perfectly fine. Feel free to apologize because that's very difficult for us to sometimes go without the apology. Uh, the second thing you can do is stop pushing past your limits to serve others. Um, I used the example of eating at a Thai restaurant. I don't think it's coincidental I used a food example. Many INFJ and INFP personality types have food sensitivities and food allergies. This is a really big thing for us. A lot of us can't process you know, gluten, dairy, um, we don't do well on sugar, we don't do well with caffeine, we don't do well with alcohol, substances and um, spicy things, anything that's sort of strong or extreme can have a really big impact on our system. So a lot of the time we will find ourselves in a social situation, whether it's a workplace gathering or it's a birthday party or it's a holiday and everybody is drinking or eating cake or you know having spicy food, whatever it is, and then we feel very self-conscious because we have to say, oh, you know, I'd love a piece, but I can't really eat X, Y, Z. It doesn't agree with my system. Then people give us the funny looks and kind of act like we're being high maintenance. So it's really important that you don't push past your limits to serve others. Even if you get the funny looks or people try to get you to have the piece of cake anyway, or the martini or the cup of coffee or whatever it is that doesn't agree with your highly sensitive system, it's really important that you honor those limits because again, the body is watching. Your body's like, oh, I see, you're just gonna eat the cake anyway. Okay, oh yeah, you're gonna have that second cup of coffee. Well, we're gonna pay for it later. Thanks, buddy, <laughs> you know? So you wanna be really aware of that, that your body needs you to stand up for it. Your body needs you to say, I'm so sorry, I can't have milk. You know, I'm so sorry, um, I can't have anything. I can't have peanuts. Like I can't have this or that, right? Again feel free to use that apology. Say, I'm so sorry, but I can't have this thing. It, the important thing is that you don't push past the limit. It's not really how you phrase it. It might come out a little bit awkwardly. Um, you might feel rude, but it's really important that you don't push past that limit. This is how we stop the pattern of self-abandonment. This might sound like small stuff, saying I can't have a piece of cake or I can't have peanuts or whatever, but it's not small stuff. The small stuff really adds up over time and it helps us heal this pattern of self-abandonment that we've been carrying since childhood and it's still causing damage in our adult lives. So when you're doing this work, you're really asking yourself, you know, how am I selling myself out? How am I betraying myself, right? How am I not protecting myself? How am I not protecting my body? Um, my body and myself are standing to one side and watching me. What do they think? Do they feel protected? Do they feel honored? Or am I not doing that? for myself? Am I not doing that for my body? They're really important questions to ask. I'm teaching a new class on this topic and so many others. It's called INFJ and INFP Life. We are gonna be covering a ton of stuff in this class. Uh, one of the big things we're gonna be covering is repressed anger and why repressed anger is such a big thing for INFJ personality types and INFP personality types because it really is and it's very rarely talked about. Um, INFJs and INFPs are known as emotional beings, and so that's talked about a lot, our emotional functions. But the actual topic of repressed anger 
and how that manifests for us and how that shows up, what that means for our lives. I don't see that around very much, so I really wanna go deep into that topic. We're also gonna talk about making our creative life a priority, which I talk about in every one of my classes because it's so important. And also going fully into an unconventional life, which I've been hearing lately from a lot of INFJs and INFPs showing up in my classes, especially the past few years since the pandemic. A lot of people have left their jobs, found new jobs, left relationships, found new relationships, moved, really come into a new era of their lives. And I'm hearing from so many intuitive people more and more every day who are saying, I'm realizing I can't live the traditional life. I cannot align with the cultural norm. Someone actually said that word for word in my last class. I cannot align with the cultural norm. And what does that mean? So we're gonna be exploring that as well in this new class, INFJ and INFP life, because I truly believe that for any INFJ or INFP to have a happy life, a thriving life, we have to accept that we're just not normal and we're probably not going to ever align with the cultural norm and that's okay. We can still carve out our own life. We can still carve out our own place to be in the world and feel very good about that. Registration for this class opens on March 22nd. The first day of class is Wednesday, March 27th. If you are not signed up for my newsletter, please make sure you sign up. That's where I send out all the notifications. This is the third video in this series for this class. I've already gotten a lot of emails from people who have said, I can't find it on your website. Where's the link? Where's the class schedule? I'm going to be sending that out via my newsletter. So please make sure you are signed up for the newsletter because you will need to be signed up to get all the information and to get the registration link. The link for my newsletter is in the comments below. If you have questions, lauren at laurencepala.com. I would love to answer them before the class gets started. And I hope I see you there. This is gonna be a really great class. I will say too, I have the most wonderful, wonderful people who show up for my classes. So if you're looking for intuitive people, INFJ, INFP friends, it's a really good bet to sign up for my classes. You will meet people and they are just lovely people. All right, thanks so much for tuning in today and I will see you next time.